Bratić je asistent na ocijeku za etnologiju i kulturnu antropologiju učiništa u Zadrvoj. Inače, njegov primarni interes je za odračašće, što je vrlo interesantno i preko tog istraživanja on pokušava da riješi problem sjećanja i tako da je. Što je zanimljivo. Since my presentation is much more important than me, I will shut down the lights so you can see the photos. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, we can speak about different kinds of places of memory being created in Bosnia at this point. We listened to some, some processes happening already in the lectures before me. I will focus on creating one Bosnian pilgrimage place of the Croats in, in Bosnia. Because I'm doing for the last five years very extensive ethnographic field work at this site. Uh, I will skip the theor theoretical introduction because we have uh, limited time. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Pro Professor uh, Halimovic gave some introduction to my lecture actually. And uh, uh, I want to first of all focus on this photograph because it's the end of the story basically, because this is the situation in 2000. And and uh, 13, the last photos I take, I have taken. Uh, this is how the, this pilgrimage place looks today. So this is a new new chapel representing, in in a kind of symbolic way, a hand joined in in a in a prayer, uh, looking to the sky, and you can see thousands of pilgrims uh, came from all around the world. So uh, to to use the 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 book of of P Professor Halilovic, this is a kind of uh, war torn displaced community of Bosnia, the, the Croats coming together once a year. So this is the only time that they uh, gather at this at this place, and this is the only time where when this community is together to share this uh, short period of time. It's 15th of of August every year. Uh, <clears throat> so the aims of my presentation was this, I will skip this historical introduction also, although I think that historical background is very important to, to understand how, how this uh, came to this, because this pilgrimage place from the beginning was uh, made up, actually from nothing, the story, it, the painting was brought in the 18th century and so on and so on, but not to go into, into details about this, I will outline main places of memory in this sacred landscape being created uh, there and I will say very shortly something about how, what kind of function these places of memory actually have for Bosnian Croats. So this, this is the historical background, I will switch to 1992 when this predominantly the Croatian village was occupied by, by the Serbs military and the painting, the Madonna, I will show you later on the, the photograph of that painting, was taken through forest to Croatia. Uh, it was kept in split one, one short period of time after that in Zagreb, after that in Maria Bistrica, a very important national shrine. So uh, it's, uh, this period is the key how this painting and later on this pilgrimage place started to be just one of the pilgrimage places in Bosnia-Herzegovina and started to be to, to become a national symbol because uh, people from this community went on pilgrimage to Split, then to Zagreb, then to Maria Bistrica and they called her Madonna, their, their refugee. So they kind of identified her, how she fled to the forest, to Croatia, with how they fled to to, to Croatia, Germany, Austria, whatever. And uh, a very important occasion was when that painting was returned to the village in 1999. It was still uh, very shortly after the war. The relationship wasn't so good at that, at that point, but le 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 later on the Serbs also accepted the return of the Croatian co community. But uh, it seems that the Catholic Church, the institution, realized that this is a good, good thing, so that they can use this painting and this pilgrimage place to create a, a pilgrimage 
as a national symbol or to to use this painting to get uh, something that will get this community but Bosnian or, or the Croats from from being an age together that will be used as a symbol of identity, the symbol of their survival and the symbol of their return. So the cons construction of the, of the sanctuary began in 2010 and I've been following it since, since then, I started even earlier to, I was very actually lucky to be there and I could follow how this sanctuary was transformed and how these kind of places were created in this sacred landscape and how kind how, how different meanings were given to the landscape and to these places. So this is the painting I'm talking about, it's from 18th century, very interesting story, oral tradition about the painting connecting Muslims with the Croats and so on and so on, it's a, it's a long story. This, is, this was made in 1875 by Arthur J. Evans, English archaeologist, uh, who, who was there actually, he, he, gave, he gives a very interesting description of the, of the place and already there is a place of memory be, being built in 1975. And this is the Muslim lady I was talking to concerning with the story, but that's a different story. 1907, this is how the pilgrimage looked like, and this is the condition in 2010. So this, is an, this was an old small chapel uh, built in 1958 by the local villagers. It was in a forest, but basically nowhere, and it was more or less local. It was a local pilgrimage place. This is how it looks, uh, how the people gathered around the chapel. They brought the painting from the village to that uh, chapel in the forest and prayed. And this is also a very important place later on. Actually, this is an old church in the village that uh, started being used in 1980s. And uh, during the, the war it was completely destroyed. And this is how it looked in 2010. And all, already one, one year after the construction started, so they tear, tear down half of the hill, they constructed the concrete buildings, they constructed a new uh, altar for the, for the painting. And the interesting story about the old chapel that was built by the villagers, they didn't want to destroy it, they wanted to save it. The local priest and the church wanted to destroy it, there was no function for it anymore. So there was a kind of, they agreed to, to re reuse it and the church had an idea and they put it uh, near the parish church as a door. So basically this old chapel is being used as a, as a door so when they come from the parish church and they took the painting to the hill, they uh, crossed through this old chapel in a way symbolically connected the ancestors that built this chapel with the new new young people that are building this new chapel, this new monu monu monumental shrine. So as, as you can see, they go through the uh, chapel and they, they emphasize this here, but basically the chapel is not the same any, any, anymore. It's now a gazebo more than a chapel. It's, it's just the year is, is there to, to show, yes, this is that old chapel, but actually it's a completely different building. And if you remember that old parish church is now completely clean and they built, this is not a bell <laughs> tower, this is a, a monument to the fallen soldiers. Actually, where they put candles, there's names of the fallen soldiers that gave their lives during the last war. And from the old parish church they made the altar of peace. Uh, not any peace, but peace for all the Croatian victims throughout history. So this is a new kind of place of memory, new a uh, uh, new place in this sacred landscape being being created. And this is the new chapel uh, 2012 where they now uh, have the painting inside and as, as you can see the old chapel is now being reconstructed, it's, it's much more nicer now and they take the painting through that old chapel, of, of course there's a flag of the, the Croatians, there's a flag of Madonna and the flag of Vatican at the, at the head and they carried it to the new chapel now being there and it's, this is 2013. Uh, we have a new element in 2014, new element on this, uh, with this uh, monument for the fallen soldiers. It's a coat of arms of Bosnian, the Croats from 
Bosnia. So what is actually happening here at this sanctuary, at this pilgrimage place, is that we have a construction of a, of a sacred landscape, basically, that consists of prominent places that have a very important symbolic meaning and that, that pr produce a story that uh, promotes sanctity of home, necessity of the, of the returning of the, the, the Croatian people to Bosnia, of honoring ancestors and honoring fallen soldiers, and we have all that inscribed in the landscape, literally. Uh, this is not something unique. There's, this is St. John Podmilace. So you have an old church that was completely destroyed. They rebuilt it exactly to the stone, to the smallest stone, but they are building behind it. You can see, and this is just one part of it, they are building a big monumental sanctuary there also. Uh, do you know what, what this? I thought it's a very famous uh, Bosniak dua that was basically local. But uh, before the war, recently before the war, especially during the war and now after the war, it became a very symbolically important place for the Bosniak people with politicians there, with different kind of practices happening, with connected to the identity, the struggle, and, and so on, of Bosniak people. So in a, in, a, in a way we have religion, politics, nationalism, that results in a, the, the creation of new places, of new sacred places, new practices are being performed, new places of memory are being... Actually, uh, the best way to seize a space, which is actually obviously most important thing today in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, is to mark the landscape, to, to mark it as, as your own. If you, I suppose anyone who, who is going through Bosnia and Herzegovina, when you come to some village or some city, first thing that you see is the church. Okay, this is this village. If it's a mosque, this is this village. So this, this kind of way institutional churches are trying to mark the space. Uh, just think of how many churches, mosques have been built in the last 10 years. That, that's something that uh, it's, it's by itself uh, evidence of how things are happening and how spaces are being marked or landscapes. And I'm finished and if someone wants to know more about this, it's a good thing to promote my two volume edited volumes being uh, going out this year, Pilgrimage Politics and Placemaking in Eastern Europe by Ashgate and Pilgrimage in Sacred Places in Southeastern Europe by Litvelag. Thank you for your attention. I try to be very fast and short.